Hello and welcome to the Widow's Oil. Today I want to discuss how the real mother always stands for unity and the um, mother whose child dies stands for separation. Uh, we can read it here in uh, 1 Kings 3 where we read the very well-known um, parable of how uh, Solomon made a wise decision regarding who was the real mother of a child. Now, we all know this parable. However, I'm going to read it in case there's someone that does not. So it's from verse uh, 16 of 1 Kings 3. Solomon's wise judgment. Now, two women who were harlots came to the king and stood before him. And one woman said, O oh my Lord, this woman and I dwell in the same house, and I gave birth while she was in the house. Then it happened the third day after I had given birth that this woman also gave birth, and we were together. No one was with us in the house except the two of us in the house. And this woman's son died in the night because she lay on him. So she arose in the middle of the night and took my son from my side while your maidservant slept and laid him in her bosom and laid her dead child in my bosom. And when I rose in the morning to nurse my son, there he was, dead. But when I had examined him in the morning, indeed, he was not my son whom I had born. Then, then the other woman said, No, but the living one is my son, and the dead one is your son. And the first woman said, No, but the dead one is your son, and the living one is my son. Thus they spoke before the king. And the king said, The one says, This is my son who lives, and your son is the dead one. And the other one says, No, but your son is the dead one, and my son is the living one. Then the king said, bring me a sword. So they brought a sword before the king. And the king said, divide the living child in two and give half to one and half to the other. Then the woman whose son was living spoke to the king, for she yearned with compassion for her son. And she said, oh, my Lord, give her the living child and by no means kill him. But the other said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. So the king answered and said, Give the first woman the living child, and by no means kill him, for she is his mother. And all Israel heard the judgment with the, which the king had rendered, and they feared the king, for they saw that the wisdom of God was in him to administer judgment. Now this parable, to me, perfectly describes what's going on in the Christian church today. So I'm speaking here of the church itself because we must remember in Revelation we are told when the um, when the church gives birth, the son is taken to the heaven realm and the mother is on the earth being persecuted. So likewise, there is a heavenly Jerusalem and there is a heaven realm of of um, faith. Um which those that are born again can see, and then there is on the earth. So when I'm saying, yeah, um, both women were harlots, I'm saying in the respect that the church um, makes alliances with the world, and the Lord sees that uh, he's, he calls us uh, adulterers if we mind the things of the world. Um, so... We have here two women who are harlots that are, live in one house and both give birth to a child. The one first gives birth and the other one on the third day after the first one gave birth, this one also gave birth and they were in the same house. Then the second woman's son died in the night because of her actions and then she made a switch in the night. And so the first woman is seeking justice from the king. 
And then the king's judgment is very wise because it perfectly points out who is obviously the true mother. And that is the one that wanted, didn't want the child to be divided. So to me, this so perfectly explains what's going on now in the church with Messianic Judaism and Hebrew roots um, and many um, Jewish believers turning to Christ and entering the church. And likewise, many Christians turning to Hebrew roots. So we've got this one house. They were in one house. So that represents our modern day Christianity. And as you can see, the first woman had the um, the second woman had the child on the third day after the first woman. Now that, if you if you think of a day as a thousand years, in these last two thousand years, you've had the normal Christian church that we all know with all its faults, because it's a harlot. It's a harlot because it is spiritually fornicating with the kings of the earth, meaning with. Um, with people who stand for earthly doctrines and the doctrines of men. So the church on the earth is not perfect, um, as you all know. But nevertheless, the first woman had the living child. That represents Christianity. Then this woman in the same house, she only had the ch her child on the third day, which represents our time the third millennium, so you had the 2,000 years, and now you have the birth of this um, messianic movement with which is now entering into mainstream Christianity. So this, let's call it this messianic movement and the orthodox or the traditional Christianity. Okay, doesn't matter if it's, Catholicism or Protestantism, I'm just speaking very generally. You've got these two forms. You've got the Christianity that um, we we know, and then this new one, this Hebrew roots messianic one. Um, and then you can see this constant fighting. Who has the living one and who has the dead one? Now, this is the fighting about the law. It's the wrong thing to fight about. Everybody is fighting about, is the law uh, abolished? Is it nailed to the cross? Um, no, uh, it. you know, we must uh, um, obey the Torah. This is the wrong fight, people. This is the straw man argument. Because Jesus did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. And we are being accused falsely that we are saying that the law um, is abolished, that there's no law. So the fight is about something, a straw man argument, which is going to be lost if people focus there. That your focus, if you want to battle this thing in the spirit, must not be regarding doctrine and trying to prove that the that the doctrine um, as handed down is correct, which it is. This parable shows us the living child is of the first woman. Um, but if we stay here where we constantly battle about uh, the law and whether it's been done away with or not, then it's, we're going to get nowhere. Like Solomon says, it just goes on and on. No. We need to focus on the matter of separation. That's the only way we are going to overcome the devil with his wiles in this ma manner. It's the only way we need to keep focusing on the fact that of the oneness that Christ brought. So I'm speaking this to those of you that um, are able to receive this. And I'm telling you, do not spend your time trying to prove grace over law it's going to be futile the people that uh, are are standing against you they do not have the insight they do not have the revelation of grace so all they see is that you are lawless um, even when you speak the truth so the focus is like Solomon did the wise one is to 
um, to prove who is the right, the correct mother. The correct mother is the one that does not want the vision. You see, the other one wanted the vision. She said, let him be neither mine nor yours, but divide him. Now, that is exactly what this, this messianic movement wants to do. It keeps saying, we are Jews and you are Gentile Christians. And if you say, no, um, there is no more Jew or Gentile, they do so much theological gymnastics to prove that uh, that is not true. And they tend to take you to Romans 11 about the olive tree and imply that you are boasting against the natural branches. People, this is all Satan. It's trickery. It's working through through people. The, the people re may really be born again, but because they um, are still carnal, Satan's able to accuse us. Now, if we do not take do this battle in the right way, we will not get... Um, anyway, it'll go on like these two harlots fighting, fighting. Do not get involved in that, but look at the wisdom here. The first woman did not, she was prepared to give up the child rather than divide. That represents those who have the understanding and who, who are fighting against splitting the faith into again Jew and Gentile. The very thing that that Christ came to to make one new man and to break down the middle wall of separation is the very thing that's being attacked. They want to build that wall up again and say there is a difference between a Jewish and a and a Christian believer, if I can speak that way. One prong of attack from Satan I see are those that come and bring in Jewish customs and say we must go back to keeping the law of Moses and um, keeping the feasts and that sort of thing. So that, again, that splits Christianity because you've got many people that are in the traditional Christianity and then you've got these movements that are going to this Hebrew roots. So again, it is they are setting a, a difference and making a distinction. It is dividing the faith in two. It's dividing the spiritual child in two. And then you've got the others that say, no, no, you, if you're a Gentile believer, so-called, you mustn't keep any laws or anything, but you mustn't stop the Jews from doing it, you see? And then again, they have this system where there's often a, a rabbi or a Jewish believer that's teaching traditional Christians, and um, it's not about Jesus at all. It's all about Jewishness and about the difference between Jew and Gentile. And that is very dangerous, people, because there is a system called the Noahide laws, which hopefully soon I'll be able to speak about. Um, but it is a system that uh, the Talmudic rabbis have, whereby uh, you as a Gentile can be a sort of a part of the Jews by adhering to the seven Noahide laws. Now, if you give up your, your Christianity to become a Noahide, then you are selling your spiritual inheritance, you see. And that is the trick. Satan is working through people, even through Jewish people who have truly come to Jesus, but they are still carnal. They, they struggle to let go of their traditions and they are... Um, they, they don't understand grace. So Satan is able to bring in destructive heresies through um, this situation. But this parable beautifully illustrates that the true mother said, no, there's no division, because that's exactly what we are told in Galatians 3. It's just so clear yet people do not see it. It 
says there in Galatians 3 from verse 26 to 28, for you are all sons of God through faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. It is just so clear. And then the people come and they just deny it and say, but it, you, there is still a, a difference. Now on earth, physically, there is a difference, but in the heavenly, we are one. And it is supposed to be um, on earth as it is in heaven, not in heaven as it is on earth, you see. So this is a big problem, people, but the, the answer is not to focus on is the law abolished or not. We are never going to win that argument. Um, it's, it's futile. The people need to grow up into the Messiah and in due time they they will understand. The focus of the argument must be on this oneness. We must stand for this oneness. We must stand for what Jesus Christ came, the wonderful thing he came to do to abolish the middle wall of separation. So if we read in Ephesians 2, um, from verse 14 to verse 18, we read there, it says Christ is our peace. You see, so in Christ, there will be peace between Jew and Gentile. But if we try to make peace by focusing on the law and by making ourselves more Jewish or alternatively, to um, unite, but the one group remains looking Gentile and the other group looks Jewish, then we are making peace in a way where there is going to be such enmity, you see. So Christ must be our peace, for he himself is our peace who has made both one. We can't be one by both following the law again, and we can't be one by one group following the law and the other one not. Both those ways are fallacies, and Satan is working hard for us to be fighting about the matter of the law. But the only thing we need to do is to hold on to the oneness that Christ brought. So I want to emphasize this. The answer is to Keep focusing on this oneness that Christ brought. He made them us one and he's broken down the middle wall of separation. Having, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is the law of commandments contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace. So people say it means the the this this wall is the law that is abolished but the one the, the oneness that he made is between jew and gentile so there's no more distinction you see because he made christ made something totally new something totally new in christianity one new man making peace and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far off and to those who were near, for through him um, we both have access by one spirit to the Father. His words are so beautiful and they are being absolutely torn apart, saying the Gentiles are those far off and the Jews are those that are near. Um, but when a Jew today comes to Christ, he is also a far off. You see, even that in those days, those that were a far off, many of them were Jews that were scattered. So this is being so abused. It just it makes me sad, really. I, I feel like that mother who's being lied about and accused and I know the truth I know that 
and and it horrifies me that they want to split us into gentile christians and and jews and then they want to uplift the jewish believers um it's it's idolatry people so to get back to the parable of the two women they're in the same house christianity the one gave birth 2000 years ago to the living son the one gives birth at the end but her son is not living you see because um the messianic believers are holding fast to the law which is the letter kills um so that's the dead son but now they are insisting that they are the mother of the living son and there is a huge fight in the in the house and and the king shows us the way is to focus on the matter of unity that's all and i cannot stress enough that um, contentions about the law is going to get us nowhere we must 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 focus on this oneness that uh, jesus brought for us if we don't do that then satan will will get what he wants namely division you see the the second woman represents the accuser that says let him be neither mine nor yours but divide him he satan wants to take the living child even away from the messianic believers and he wants to divide the the church because that's how divide and conquer works you see so all we need to do the mother the the true mother is the jerusalem above she's the mother of us all now there is a mother in the heavenly realm which is undefiled untouched that's where jesus christ is in the heavenlies so that is the true faith and then on earth there is the physical church which unfortunately is um through the earthly doctrines and through what through what's happening on the earth is described as a harlot nevertheless she receives mercy just like jesus uh, said regarding the woman caught in adultery go and sin no more so there is mercy for the first woman and 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 she is vindicated as the mother and it's wonderful to read by no means kill him she is his mother she does not want to divide the child into jew and gentile because it was so such a hard fought um battle to make the two one and we do not want to make void the work of jesus christ who broke down the middle wall of separation and when we were baptized into christ we put on christ we have a new um clothing so a, a christian in the first century had to let go of all their jewish customs and ways likewise the romans they had many god's people and it, it cost them to put on christ they became something new and the the jewish people that turn to christ now have to go through the same thing but you see they don't want to because it's very shameful for them it's hard for them and even for for a person now in our culture that is so apostatized it is hard when you turn to christ it's not easy so we all need to realize it's difficult for everybody the bible says your brothers and sisters are going through the same fiery trial it's not more difficult for a jew it's the same that's the what i have noticed is when when we first turn to the lord we are very childish and selfish and self-absorbed just like a child and we think what we go through is more difficult than anybody else think of yourself if you if you came to the lord later in your life think how you think 
how you suffered was worse than anybody on earth. Now we all do that, but we all go through the same suffering and we all have to put off our traditions and our ways and put on Christ. If we don't do that, if you don't have on Christ, you are cast into outer darkness when you attend the wedding supper. There is a parable uh, regarding the marriage supper that the king made for his son. And when he came, he saw one person who did not have a wedding garment and he threw him out in outer darkness. So what that means is this guest at the marriage, in other words, this guest that joined into Christ, the Christian faith did not have Christ on. And he was cast into outer darkness means he does not understand anything. Outer, outer darkness means a lack of understanding, you see. So if you do not put on Christ and put off your old manner of life, then you cannot enter the kingdom of God. You cannot understand grace. You, you cannot. And then you will... Um, you will have so many false doctrines in your heart. You will not understand. So neither Jew nor Greek is this one child. The believers, the body of Christ must be one. And it is living if it is one. If you cut it in half, it's going to be dead also like the other child that has been born. So if you... Love Jewish believers. The best thing you can do is not to dress like them and act like them, but to stand fast in your faith. 